I'm here. So now I'm talking with my husband. I could kind of share what I wanted to say and what I want to um, hone in on is that we, Jesus, who was born in a manger, was not like, it was a manger, guys. It was a place where people put all their animals. It's a feeding. It's a feeding trough is a manger. Okay, so we know that it's a place where they feed, but I wanted to give you guys an image of what I was saying. A place where sheep, a bay, bay all day long, goats, um, nagging, um, chickens in and out, laying eggs, cats, eating the Going chicken. to the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> Pooping everywhere. Talking about um, horses neighing. Um, smelly. Very smelly. And, and they didn't have bathrooms. Do you even consider that they didn't have bathrooms back then? So, and then here's Mary and Joe, this poor couple. They're a poor couple, and they have they have to leave their home. She's a virgin. He is a man that wanted to marry her, but she's now pregnant. So they're pretty much going in hiding, but God sent them to this place called Bethlehem, and the only place that they can end up being is in a manger, which is a low place, a place where no one imagines, I want my baby to be born in a place where all the animals crap at free will. Wasn't a five-star hotel, wasn't even a hospital. Right, so with that being said, I hope you got the picture of the high priest being born in a low place. And then I wanna talk about, um, so here is Jesus born in this manger. And he, at that time, I love to think of this song called Oh Holy Night. Oh Holy Night makes me think about when Jesus was born in this dark world that the lights came on. The lights came on in the hearts of men because now there's hope. There is desire, probably desire to love one another, see each other, be with one another because Jesus was born. They had not understood at the moment that it was because Jesus was born. And I want to talk about, make a point about the fact that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and yet he was born in this low place. Humble, humble. I mean, even his, his the swaddling clothes were just nothing more than rags. Rags. He was wrapped in rags. And so we, as children of God, now we are heirs to the throne, need to remember that the prince of peace wasn't born as the prince of peace he was born like a person who is homeless a hobo a, a throwaway a nobody that's what he was born as but that's not who he was and we should remember that as we live in this world to identify with Christ who identify with you and me and if we identify with Christ and we should stop identifying with the world. Stop trying to be like the world because if we stop being like the world and identify with Christ, then we can see a person who is in a low place. We can see identify with them because we know what it's like because we have, just because we have clothes and things don't mean that we are better than anyone. This is just a dress up. There was no room at the inn. Whatever no room was. at the inn place. No room for God. No room. So much in this story epitomizes the human condition. We're so busy. We're so into ourselves. We're so into celebrity worship and all of this stuff. And they are not stars. Yeah. I can't get enough of that. We don't get that. So if we can stop identifying with the world and identify with Jesus who identified with us in a low place, then we can turn the lights on in the hearts of men that are suffering because of the world. Humility. And it you takes know, humility. You know, I mean, it had to take humility for Jesus to incredible. wrap himself you know, in human flesh. The love is unbelievable. I, I can't even comprehend the love that would make one, God want to become one of us. <laughs> 
It's, it's beyond that my comprehension. That makes me think of that song that talks about, and he became one of us. I mean, he didn't even have to. So with that being said, we should consider, I know it's, it's going to take a lot for us to stop identifying with the world to identify with Christ. Because when he came, he was alone, right? It seemed like he was alone. But yet he helped these 12 men to understand to not to fight. And he sent them out in, in two by two and told them to go and tell the story. If they don't receive it, dust your feet and walk away. We are in a world right now where even if you identify with the world, we're talking about offense. We're offensive and take offense. Hey, we ought to. Always was, arguing. Always. I want to share this. So we're on a trip and we there's two people that are on the same trip, same place. And we find that they don't want to be with us. Not that we, but I'm going to leave the olive branch right there. Like, I'm not offended by it. I can understand <laughs> that you don't want to be with us. Yet we're Christians. These, we're all Christians. And we like to fellowship. And at this point in time, even though we reached out, they didn't reach back. That can be offensive because we're in the same place. But guess what? We're not offended. We're blessed to have the opportunity to reach out. But we're not going to take offense because you don't want to be with us. Because God is always where? With us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And for us to grab a hold of that, we have to be able to identify with Christ. If we identify with him, we won't take offense. We can actually see it as an opportunity to keep loving, to not to be that way, to not to let our feelings be our leaders, but our feelings are to help us to know that we are human beings. And Jesus helped us to be in humility. So, I want to go back to what we're talking about as far as the reason Christmas, not Christmas, but Christ must live in you and me. How to not be easily persuaded by the world for Christmas. There's going to be so many families without loved ones this year. It's going to be their first year without a loved one. So, we should think about being present, not presence. It's okay to have gifts, but to remember that the real gift is you. You are the gift. Going somewhere to be with your family, I pray that people break bread and eat and love and share and enjoy this holiday. There's going to be babies born. Be with each other. Appreciate each other. Appreciate and even the strangers that you come across. You know, we need to be more appreciative of each other. Mm -hmm. We need to be more aware that our very lives are a gift. We didn't create them. Identify with Christ. He was selfless. He knew who he was. And here we take a lifelong journey to even find out who we are. But then the world tell us who we are. And that's what we identify with. That's what we attach to. But all of that's not real. It's false. It's temporary. It's not long lasting. And it it actually yeah. is. You know, this is the season to think about what is most important in life. You look so handsome, by the way. Uh oh, well, you look beautiful to me. So there. But yeah, think about what is most important. And it's not things. It's not cars and houses and all of those kinds of things. Nope. Nothing wrong with those. But those aren't life. Those aren't the most important things. Mm -mm. Uh, and, and we forget that sometimes. Uh, it's, it's the gifts that we have been given in relationships. To Christ. And the most important relationship is with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So once we get that straight and we understand that, then it's easier and more productive for us when we relate with other people, whether and it be family, friends, business associates, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They are also a gift. 
Right. And then we need to remember that um, as we come in this season, as we are together in this season, that it really truly is about love. Loving on one another, again, not identifying. I pray that this season you don't identify with the world, but you identify with Jesus. And if we practice thinking about identifying with Jesus, it just may help us when we're in the grocery store, when we're in the line, when we're passing one another to be loving. Let the, you know how they say, tis the season to be jolly. Well, you'll be joyous because you're thinking of why we are here. So even if you don't have two pennies to rub together, if you have your health and your strength, you have something to be joyous about. You can share that joy with somebody who's sitting in a wheelchair. Look at them, smile, pass by, and just greet someone in love. Identify with Christ. When we identify with Christ, we forget about ourselves. Jesus lived here for 33 years, and he consumed himself with us. That's a lot. Yeah. Amazing. And how often do we consume ourselves thinking about one another? Or ourselves being self-centered. We are consumed with ourselves and the world want us to think so much about self, self, self. I'm in that, I know. And I'm trying my best every day to think about other people and not think so much of myself. And that is a hard thing to do. It is not easy not thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. Because I wake up with myself. <laughs> I think I'm about myself all day long. And I got to go to bed with myself. But Jesus is saying, mm -mm, that is not the way, that is not the life, and that is not the truth. The truth is in him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And if we think of his way, his truth, his life, then we can identify with mm -hmm. him. Why he died for us, that means we can die to ourselves. Then we can see someone else. We can relate to them. We can reach out to them. And we won't hold stuff so tight in our hand, we can pass it along. Yeah. And that's really the message of Christmas. It is. It's called incarnation. It's God within. It's our hearts being changed, our hearts being guided. You know, and that's what the baby Jesus came for. To redeem, to forgive, and for us to resume and get back to God, have a relationship with, with one God another. that's eternal. Right, and have a relationship with one another. I want to emphasize to stop being so selfish, thinking that it's all about you. It is not all about you. If you think so much on yourself, you can forget the person that's standing right next to you. Like, we don't know what's going on with the person in the pew next to us. But if you stop for a moment and say, how you doing, and really mean how you doing, not just a pass by. You might get to know something about someone else and feel blessed that you did. So I pray to each and every one of you, or whoever received this message, be encouraged, be delighted, and I pray that the fire that's in the two of us reach out and touch the fire in you. And because he said, "Iron sharpens iron." Yeah. And God bless you this season. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 And then what's this how that song go about um oh, oh holy night the stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth Merry Christmas Merry Christmas Christ must now, uh, someone show me Shaq. How do you do Shaq? No, not this. That's a different Shaq. Like this. Shaq. Amazing. Now, someone